All right, well, this is the day the Lord has made. We shall, we will. We must rejoice and be glad in it. And we're excited that we have another opportunity to come to you on a Thursday. On a Thursday, we call it Thirsty Thursday. For the word reminds us, he who hungers, she who hungers, they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. And so we're grateful that we have an opportunity to come together to seek God, not just for our lives, but for our families, for our children. And today in particularly, we are praying for frontline and essential workers. We'll be lifting them up before the Lord. But I always try, I always try to uh, give you some encouragement or an encouraging word or like a little Sunday recap uh, from what I've preached at my church on Sunday. And so uh, we've been journeying in our, in the, the lectionary, we've been going now through the parables of Jesus. And on last Sunday, we dealt with the uh, famous story of the feeding of the 5,000. And in that particular text, one of the things that I learned early on is that it's something when you can pull the unfamiliar out of a familiar text. It's something when you can pull the unfamiliar out of a familiar text. And so in Matthew chapter uh, 14, looking at verse number 13 through 20, we find this story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. Tell a neighbor, tell a friend, text someone, share this, like this, let them know that Thirsty Thursday is on and we'll be praying for essential workers, frontline workers. If you're out on the forefront, if you're out in this pandemic, we are lifting you up before God in a few. Here it is. It says, when Jesus heard it, he departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. And when Jesus went, he saw a great multitude and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a deserted place and the hour is very late. Send the multitudes away that they may go to the villages and buy themselves food. But Jesus said to them, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, we have here only five loaves and two fish. He said, bring them here to me. And then he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. He took the five loaves, looking up to heaven, he blessed it and broke it and gave the loaves to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the multitudes. And so they all ate and were filled and they took up the 12 baskets full of fragments that remained. Now those who had eaten were about 5,000 men besides the women and children. We all know this infamous story. We all know the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000 plus the women and the children. And the text starts off telling us that Jesus had to practice a little social distancing. Jesus gets in the boat and goes, it says, apart. He goes to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard that he was there, the multitude went where Jesus was. And the Bible says, the Bible says that Jesus had compassion on the crowd. I said Jesus had compassion on the crowd. And I don't know about you, but that is a good place to get excited because we are a part of the crowd. I make up the crowd. I make up the crowd. And I'm glad to know that Jesus doesn't look past the crowd. Jesus looks in the crowd. Jesus sees the potential in the crowd, the power that's in the crowd, the strength that's in the crowd, the ability that you have to make change. There's someone in the crowd that has what we need for a miracle, oh God. And so in other in the other gospels, it says it was a, a little boy's lunch. But here, the disciples say to him, they say, hey, you've healed the people, they're hungry, 
We don't have anything. Send them away. Jesus said, no, don't send them away. Don't send them away. And notice what he says. He says to them, in the evening when they came to him, they're still in this desert place. They're saying, send them away. But Jesus said, no, they don't need to go away. We'll give them something to eat. We only have the two fish and five loaves. Look at verse 19. Then he commands the multitudes to sit down on the grass. You guys know the story. Jesus takes the bread. He lifts it up towards heaven. He blesses it. He breaks it. And he distributes it to the disciples. The disciples distribute it to the multitude. And you know what happens? It keeps going. It keeps going. And, and when I preach from this text, I've preached and titled it Leftovers and, and, and lifted up the points that uh, God knows how to use. Uh, you have to use what you have left, that whatever it is that you have left in your possession, whatever it is, God can use it. That little becomes much in the master's hands, that when I give him little, I know that God is going to, you know, I, all of that, all of that. But there's something else in the text. As on Sunday, I shared it. I called it the other miracle. There's something else in the text. The Bible says in verse number 13 that he goes to a deserted place, a desert place. Then it says in verse 15, they're in a deserted place, a desert place. Oh, but when you get to verse 19, it says that Jesus commanded the multitude to sit on the grass. Now, wait a minute. We started off in verses 1, and we were in a desert place. We started off in verse, verse, verse 15, verse 13, excuse me, a desert place. Verse 15, we're still in a desert place. And then by verse 19, he commands the multitude to sit on the grass. I didn't get on here this morning to talk to everybody, but I'm talking to the folks that have felt deserted. <laughs> I'm talking to the folks that have felt dissed. I'm talking to the folks that have been dropped. I'm talking to the folks that have found themselves in a deserted place. Have you ever felt deserted? Have you ever felt alone? You're in a house full of people and still feel alone. You're in a wonderful marriage, but find times where you feel alone. You have a great career, a great job, a great family, a great ministry, and yet there are times when you feel alone. And I got good news for those of us that have felt deserted, that have felt dissed, that have felt dropped. The Bible says that when they get to verse 19, he commands them to sit on grass. That lets you and I know that regardless of the environment, regardless of, of the circumstance, regardless of where we are, God can change it. That there is still changeable power available to get us to where we need to be in God. Did y'all see? They went from a desert place and ended up sitting on grass. They went from a desert place and ended up sitting on grass. I don't know how I don't know how long it's going to take for your grass to grow. I don't know. It may take 18 verses. It may take 5 verses. It may take 7 years. It may take 10 years. Whatever amount of time it may take, be encouraged. I learned that 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 the desert a lot in some places it, it remains desolate in the way that it is until rainfall. Because once the rain falls, then the grass is able to grow in a desert place. Maybe that's why a storm came into your life. Maybe that's why a storm hit your family or hit your finances or hit your mind or have you going through right now. Because, my beloved, God is changing that thing. And you're going from a deserted place to grass. 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 That's why David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Mama may not be with you. Daddy may not be with you. Your partner may not be with you. Your best friend may not be with you. But God will be with you. And you know one thing that I love about God is that God doesn't change. God doesn't, doesn't have a mindset where God's with you one minute and then he's not with you the next minute. God, no, no, no. God is there. And so because of that, beloved, we have the assurance to know that the power and the protection and the presence of God is ever present in our life. And so today we're lifting up 
essential workers. Today we're lifting up frontline workers. Today we're lifting up those that are in the trenches, those that have still been functioning and operating during these during these two pandemics. We're still in two. During these two pandemics, I don't know about you, but I know that God can do anything but fail. And so we position ourselves even now to pray and believe and know that God can and will meet us at our point of need. Oh God, we thank you. We praise you, we honor you today. We give you great glory, God. We give you great praise. God, we thank you that this is the day you've made, and in spite of it all, we choose to rejoice and to be glad in it. God, first and foremost, we pray that you would forgive us of anything that we may have said, done, or thought of that was against your will. We pray like David, creating us a clean heart and renew within us a right spirit. Father, your word declares that when we declare and decree a thing, it shall be established unto us. That death and life is in the power of the tongue. And so, God, we intercede today. God, we stand in the gap today. God, we are intercessors today for essential workers, for frontline workers, for those, God, that are first responders, for those that are on the front line, God, those that are working at banks, at gas stations, at stores, God, oh, those that are working in doctor's offices, those that are working in hospitals, those that are working in urgent care, those that are working in churches, those that are working in schools and at colleges, those that are working on the streets, God, those God, those essential workers, we stand in the gap this morning and we thank you for protection. Oh God, we stand in the gap this morning and we thank you, God, for covering and keeping their minds even in the midst of this while their emotions could get the best of them, while everything around them could get the best of them. God, we pray today that you would keep our minds for your word says that you will keep us in perfect peace whose minds are stayed on you and so god we thank you that our minds are in perfect peace we thank you even now that you're covering our minds we thank you for covering our thoughts for covering all that that will come in through our ear gates and eye gates we thank you even now for protecting our minds Oh, we thank you for every healthcare worker, first responder, and other essential workers. We pray your hedge of protection and safety over them and their family day and night. We plead the blood of Jesus over them and declare that they dwell in the secret place of the Most High God and abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Thousands may fall around them, but but destruction does not come near them because the Lord has given his angels charge over them and their entire family. We declare that no evil comes near them, neither does any evil plague come near them. They walk and live in divine health. I said they walk and live in divine health. We take authority over fear. We take authority over frustration. We take authority over anxiety. We take authority over depression. We take authority over all worry and doubt. And we surround them. We surround them with faith, peace, and love as they care for the needs of others, oh God. I pray even now that you would strengthen them in their body, strengthen them in their mind, strengthen them in their spirits, Thank you for keeping them healthy and strong. God, refresh them when they get weary. Empower them to stand when they feel weak. Give them strength and courage to stay strong. We pray that these workers have your wisdom. We pray that these workers have your discernment as they face every crisis. I pray the favor of God over the government, over our, our administration, over the CDC, over the hospitals. I thank you now that these governing authorities are under your will, God. We pray that your comfort and peace 
and their constant companions. We pray that there is no lack in their lives. We pray that you would provide all that they need. And so God, we thank you and we call them by name. Heather, Vicki, Allison, Unique, Toya, oh God, Marcus, Tanisha, Michelle, Ryan, Nikki, Eva, Harold, Jeff, Tracy, Trina, Keisha, Diane, Christina, Salai, Caitlin, the Torres family, Michael, Jerome, Lisa, Sherelle, Shantika, Tiffany, Yolanda, Demetra. God, we thank you for your protection. God, we thank you for your peace. God, we thank you for covering them on every side. And then, God, I lift up the people. I lift up the precious people of the First Reformed Church. I call Deb and Darlene and Ron and Clara and Joanne, Kathy, Mary Jo, Pat, Sue, Arlene, Kay, Yvonne, Ron, Janet, Barry, Janet, Janine, Dora, Shirley, Paula, Kathy, David, Mike, Ed, Bill, I call Hannah, Amanda, and Allie, all God that are essential workers, all every name that I've called, every name that I missed, every name that wasn't submitted that you know, God, be provider, protector, way maker, and miracle worker. Oh, God, some of us are just on a wing and a prayer. Some haven't even received, received this stimulus, haven't received their unemployment. God, those that are struggling, God, those that are battling even with depression and anxiety during this time, we speak peace. We call those things <laughs> that be not as though they were. We speak peace in their homes and peace on their jobs and peace in their minds and peace surrounding them, God. God, remind us that even in our desert places, you're with us, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And so we thank you. And just as you performed a miracle with two fish and five loaves, we thank you that today we are a miracle to be six feet above ground, to be in our right mind, to have the activity of our limbs. God, we thank you this morning. And we are the other miracle. And remind us, God, to be grateful. Remind us, God, to be thankful. Remind us, God, to count our blessings and to name them one by one. Oh, we bless you, God, and give you praise. And we thank you that you are a very present help in the time of trouble. God, I pray that everyone that sees this prayer, God, give them protection. Give them peace even now. And we'll be careful to give you glory, God. We'll be careful to give you all of the honor. And we'll be careful to give you all of the praise. It's in the precious, permanent, powerful name of Jesus Christ. We say amen, and amen, and amen, and amen. Hang in there, beloved. Hang in there, beloved. For we're going to get through this together. I love you. I'm praying for you. And I'm praying that your faith fail not. Encourage somebody today. Text somebody. Call somebody. DM somebody. Let somebody know that you were on their mind and in their hearts. I love you. See you on next week.